Um, first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for coming back after lunch. I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed Product Showcase. Got to see some great stuff out there. Um, it's always fun for us to, to get out there and get those first impressions and whatnot. So, so appreciate you coming out today for this particular session. Um, I'm going to preface this by we're talking about fusion training, more with an emphasis on the polypropylene market, but if you also work in polyethylene at all, a lot of these same concepts apply. But polypropylene has been the training area that has been most evolving. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about what training looks like for that particular product line. And then we have some guest speakers. We've got Mike Gordon with UA Cannon and Joe Penitowski with Asahi America with us today as well. So, uh, so I'll bring them up in a little bit. But otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started here. So, um, you know, first of all, I'd like to start out and just say, you know, some things seem easy enough, right? So, for example, driving a car. Pretty simple, right? You can get in any car, no problem. People, brand new driver, they just got their driver's license, get into a new car, and they think, that's it, I can drive any car that's out there, right? Until you do this to them, okay? Now, all of a sudden, something's changed, and they're frozen. In fact, I've heard that this is the best millennial anti-theft device that you can put on your vehicle now, right? You know, so, um, so anyhow, um, or in another area, um, running. Running is real easy, right? It's something that you know, most of us can do unless, you're, you know, unless you can't. But we all know, though, that if you want to run a marathon, that's a very different deal. And now all of a sudden it takes training. You can't just go out and start and say, hey, I'm good to go. I'm off to run a marathon. You can try, but not recommended. Sometimes people are doing things and they think they're doing it right. Great. Got a bunch of people in here. Good form. Everyone's, you know, they got the barbell out or the, the kettlebell out, everything good to go. But the reality is sometimes even though we think we're doing things the right way, we might actually look a little bit more like these guys. Okay, you know, so we, we think we're good, but we're not. And again, improper training, they're just not following the way it should be and it could be dangerous if not just goofy looking, all right? So without proper training, this applies to both polyethylene and polypropylene, a couple of things will happen. So the tendency is to one, blame the material. Yep, something went wrong, told you that, that pipe isn't any good, right? Or they're gonna blame the equipment. Yeah, I tried this new fa newfangled fusion equipment, didn't fuse right, pipe's bad, material's bad, you know, whatever. Or they're gonna blame the process. I don't, DVS, DIVIS, I don't know what that's all about. You know, there's something wrong, it's too hot, not enough temperature, too complicated, whatever the case may be. So what happens is, if somebody's new to polypropylene, then, there might be a tendency for them to return to the old material. Okay, so oh, I've been doing copper for a long time, steel, whatever, PVC, whatever. I'll just go back to that stuff because I know it works, right? I know it leaks. That doesn't matter, but it works, right? And in some cases, and we see this in the market, and I know a lot of you do as well, they might even be looking for a reason to not use polypropylene. So if they're coming into it, it's brand new, they're like, ah, I don't know about that stuff. And then the first thing that goes wrong, they're going to, yep, see, I told you so. I've been doing this 20 years. I know better, okay? So these are things that we are always mindful of. We hear it. We know you all hear it. So common practice, though, when it comes to, when it comes to training is that there's a heavy focus currently on pipe products, product offerings, properties, systems design. Okay, all good things, all very important to any pipeline installation. And then the students will receive a pipe qualification. So usually this is manufacturer training, whoever the pipe manufacturer is. You learn all about the pipe, you learn great information, you have a pipe qualification so that you're good to install that pipe based on their credentials, their criteria, meets the warranty requirements, all of that, okay? The downside is, or the other challenge though, is that when it comes to the tooling and the process, it's often a more high level or generic focus on that. In fact, we've, we've looked, I mean, we, we talk to people, we see other training material, nothing wrong with that, but it's about a 20% of that is devoted to the equipment and the fusion process. So again, it makes sense. If I'm a pipe manufacturer putting out training, I know my product well, so I'm gonna focus a lot on that, and then it's a little harder, a little bit more challenging to get in on the equipment and the process, okay? The challenge there is that then there's no tooling qualification. So I'm sending people out in the field saying, you know all about the pipe, but we've shown you how to do the tools. We believe you know how to do the tool pricing, but we don't necessarily qualify you in the same way that we would on the pipe. And then we miss an opportunity to teach tooling advantages and productivity gains. Okay, so a lot of what Macro Universe, University talks about in our classes is as much about the mechanics of um, how to use the machines, but also how to use them efficiently and how to make sure that when you're on the job site, you get the job done the right way the first time in the most efficient manner. So a lot of times the tra training is just currently structured to where we're missing some opportunity. 
We know, however, that there's some challenges with delivering this training. And in often cases, it's that trainers have other responsibilities. I had the, an exact conversation about this just out of product showcase where people are busy, they're doing other things. They might be in sales or customer service or field support. So they're not training all the time, every single day. That's not their, where their 100% headset is. So we get that. What that results in is often is an inconsistency of training delivery. Well, you know, today I'm going to have you train, and, and then you're out on a job site somewhere, so you may not train for another six months, so I'm going to pull this guy in, he's going to train. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. Not that any of it's bad, it's just not the same. It's not repeatable over and over and over again in the same way. Another thing that we see is it's often provided at the expense of the training organization. So McElroy does not do this. We typically charge for training. Not, you know, well, occasionally somebody gets a free class, right? But as a general rule, everything at least has a price tag attached to it. But in polypropylene, there's been this tendency to, in order to sell the pipe, we have to give away the training, okay? So maybe once upon a time, yes, but we see more and more where people are like, yeah, we, we get it. There's a charge for that. There's a cost for that. Maybe you build it into your quote or whatever, but you should get uh, reimbursed for that. The problem with not charging is it potentially lowers the end user's perceived value. If it didn't cost me anything yet, it's probably not that high value, so I'll just go in and do my thing. That's it. Okay. And this is true not only for training, but you know, for a lot of activities. If I charge you, you know, ten dollars to buy a ticket for a show or free, you're more likely to go if you spent the ten bucks. Okay. So then the other aspect that we see out in the field is what, what I'm terming as knowledge loss. So what do I mean by knowledge loss? Well, it could be that people forget, but oftentimes on these job sites, we'll have job site worker turnover. So I went out to the job site, I trained a crew of 10, and then four days later, um, that crew's gone and they brought in another crew. Meanwhile, my trainer, who is onto another sales call, can't get back and now all of a sudden I've got a new people out there, I've lost that knowledge that I trained, I've got a new group that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing, okay? And then on top of that, the way things are structured is there's minimal or no refresher or no on-the-job resources. Everything is tied to, I'll show up on the job, I'll train you, I'll walk away, you're good to go, and then that's it. So, what does that result in? Well, it may look something kind of like this. So. I'm really strong on one side. I know all about the pipe. I know about the properties. I know how to install it. I know how, how many feet I need to hang my hangers apart, apart. But I'm a little weak on other aspects, okay? What we all recognize, though, is that in order for any given job to be successful, you've got to have a well-rounded training effort. So if I'm going to do the American Ninja or Ninja Warrior, if I want to run this obstacle course, I can't just work on, you know, arm pull-ups. I've got to work on legs and abs and CrossFit. I've got, to, I've got to have the whole package in order to be able to successfully run that course and hit the time that I want, okay? So that's kind of what the premise of what we're talking about here. So let's talk about what a successful training program looks like. So it starts with people. You've heard that theme a couple of times now throughout Infusion, where we talk about it's people, 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 okay? You've heard Chip mention it and some others. So, I have the honor and the pleasure of managing a team of six. Um, this, this little dot here um, is an open position that we actually just filled on Monday, okay? So that's what it was, it was in a bubble. But this group of six are full-time, 100% focused on Macro University. Whether it's content development, delivery, training support, whatever it is, we eat, sleep, breathe training. It's all we do, okay? Now, it doesn't stop there within the McElroy system. And if you were at Jesse Smith's session, you heard a little bit more about some of these guys earlier. But then we extend to what I call kind of this, this next level of support. So whether it's you know, sales support, customer service, trainers, all three of these guys can train. They can be in the classroom, but they might also be on there helping somebody get a course set up, or they need to schedule, or they need equipment or tooling, whatever it is. And it really doesn't stop here, because beyond this, then all of our, you know, Jeff Turner can train and Brett Stone can train and, you know, I can go in the classroom if I need to and, you know, Francisco, we've got this continuing uh, effort within McElroy. So the point is, within McElroy manufacturing, training's a big deal. Uh, you know, part of why you saw Chip talk about uh, our new training facility the way that he did. We put a lot of time and effort into this, okay? And we see the benefits. So. So another aspect about a successful training program is it covers multiple modalities. Okay, so it could be online. 
Okay, so maybe some people just want online information. Sometimes this can be training, sometimes it can be more of an education. We have a lot of engineers will call me up and say, hey, I don't understand Fusion, can you just help me understand? I'm like, you know what, we have a 30 minute class, you can take it online, it's 15 bucks, you learn everything you need to know about polyethylene or polypropylene, they go, perfect, that's what I need. Now they know how to ask intelligent questions when they're specking it in. Okay, so online training. It could be in person and or blended. So obviously sometimes you have to be in front of people. Um, I equate our training a lot or just training in general to driving a car. There's a lot I can teach you online, but at some point you have to get behind the wheel. Okay, so if you need to operate it, that's great. We'll get you behind the wheel. And by blended, it can be, we do a lot of training where it starts online, they get all the basics out of the way. One of the things that that accomplishes is that consistency, right? So I'm not relying on an instructor to give all that theory. So everybody can see all the theory exactly the same way, and then the in-person part is the instructor showing up and saying, great, now let's get in front of the machine, I'll show you how to operate the machine. And maybe a quick review of the material, but they're good to go. Full training programs can include a qualification, okay, typically. Uh, so people want that, whatever that looks like, whatever they need for their particular job site, and then you'll have some sort of continuing education. Things change, standards change, equipment gets updated, processes change, whatever it is, it's part of the program. So right now, a little sales pitch is Macro University, this is, this is what we're doing. We have online, we have the blended, we offer qualifications, certifications, and we have the continuing ed. So the other aspect, of course, you gotta have the content, right? So that's, that's a biggie. So what we're looking at here is just, I think this is most of them, it's not all of them because I ran out of room. These are just the polypropylene training courses that we offer. And this is a combination of online, in-person, some of them are continuing ed. Uh, so I'll give you that intro to PP pipe and pipe fusion lives as both a continuing edge course. If somebody says, I just need to understand the process, and then it's part of a full training package. And then, and then I didn't even have the listing here because uh, there's too many of them. We also have courses on how to maintain your machines, how to keep them going. So if you're selling machines, you've got customers out there, you know, or worse yet, if you're renting them, you know, how many do you get back and go, God, really, how, how did that happen? You know, so, so all of this is stuff that Macquarie already has in our library, we've already been using, it's been out there and whatnot. So all good stuff there. Um, the training programs need to provide a proper depth education. So. This was intentional to choose the word proper depth. A lot of times people say in-depth, right? Oh, in-depth training, that's what we want. You don't always want in-depth training. Sometimes you do, and if that's necessary, we have courses for that. So like this course is actually more of an in-depth course teaching the theory about, to somebody about how to actually physically operate the machine. So we'll talk about the print line on the pipe. We talk about the machine components. We get into detail about the hydraulic manifold and the switching, and we, this is a basically actually a little simulator. They can spin the dials and switch the knobs and whatnot. Other times, as I mentioned, you just need this general broad overview. We have that also. So it's like, hey, maybe I just need to understand the process a little bit, or you know, I want to watch a video about it, and we're going to go ahead and throw a quiz in there just to make sure you're paying attention. Okay? So all of that is currently out there and existing. Training program is also going to address delivery and tracking. And I know this one's often a challenge as to, well, how do we get the training out there? And then how do we know who is trained and when they're trained? So you'd want something like a learning management system. Um, this is ours. Uh, that's gonna have a course. I open up the course. In this case, each one of those blue links, if you can see it, is a lesson. So students can easily go through, watch the lessons. If they need to stop in the middle, so like this one tells, you're 16% done. So I can watch, I got 15 minutes, I'll watch what I can, I'll go away, come back and finish up what I can. And then moving forward, it holds a transcript for them. So remember that slide I talked about, about the you know, on the job or future resources. Hey, I took this class three months ago, I really can't remember that section on the data logger. Well, guess what? They can go online, watch it again, get reacclimated before they get out, okay? No extra charge for that, it's just part of the package. All right, then the last piece is Testing, validation, credentialing, okay, all of this. So all of this together is going to make up a successful program, a full training program. We know a lot of people out in the industry are already doing this, okay? So it's not, it's not like up here saying that macro is the only one. But these are elements that, that we've, as we've focused in on it for so long, we know these are your key points. So another big aspect, though, is finding the right partner. So this is true for anything, 
So let's say, for example, I, you know, I, I probably need to get to the gym, and you know, who do I want as my partner out in the gym? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Probably not a bad option. Okay? You know, you know, I mean, he's kind of getting up there himself, but he, he still knows stuff, right? So yeah, I'd much be better off with Arnold as my partner than, say, uh, Bob the trainer. Okay? I, don't, I don't know that Bob's going to get me where I want to go. All right? Maybe, but a little risky. Or financial decisions. Warren Buffett. Probably a good choice. Warren knows a couple of things about money. All right. Not so sure about this guy. You may not recognize his face, but you recognize his name. It's Charles Ponzi. Okay. So probably not somebody else I want to invest money with. Right. So the right partner matters just as much as anything else. Partnerships can be really, really powerful, and oftentimes they're maybe a little unexpected. So, for example, Amazon and Kohl's. Who to ever guess that one, right? You, normally you think that they're competing. You've got brick and mortar retailer versus online retailer. But they have found a way to work together to build on each other's strengths so that they are both more successful. Another example is one that this is not entirely new because we know DoorDash, and Grubhub, and all these do. But this was one that Starbucks recently announced an exclusive deal with DoorDash to deliver Starbucks products. So again, Starbucks is going, you know what? They're big enough, they could have probably created their own delivery service. You know, pizza places hire people, right, do it. They're, no, we're gonna partner up with somebody that already knows how to take orders and get them out to people, and we'll let them be the ones to deliver our products. We'll make coffee and tea, you guys focus on delivery, okay? So, partnering with Macro University can be a big deal. So, and that's part of the ask and the encouragement and the offer to you all is that Macro University plus you in whatever capacity you're in, whether you're a trainer, whether you're a pipe manufacturer, or a distributor, or channel partner, whatever it is, there's opportunity here. And the end result can be really, truly, fully qualified operators. So they're qualified on the pipe, they're qualified in the equipment, and they're qualified on the process. More productive job sites, because now um, they're gonna know, they're gonna know how to use the, op the equipment properly, and a more productive job site is gonna benefit all of us. Uh, it's a protection of their investment. So whether it's just that they you know, knew how to use the machine right and didn't break off a jaw, or they knew how to maintain it properly so that you know, they're not having to call you for stupid stuff or they don't break something or whatever the case may be. Uh, greater adoption. When people know what they're doing and it's easy and it's fun, then they go, yeah, that was no big deal. I got good training, I'm in, all good. Okay? Um, and then oftentimes these people become industry advocates. Um, I was talking to somebody earlier today that, that mentioned they had a, uh, a contractor that they had worked with that had been mostly metal and other plastics. And they started doing polyethylene or polypropylene, and they're like, yeah, we're all in on that. Bid more jobs like that. That was easy. We love that. Great, great stuff. Okay, so it, and we see this all the time. We see people walk out of the classroom and go, this is the best stuff ever. In the end, it's a mutual success for all of us. Okay, so, so this is something that we're always interested in partnering with people. And really, I, I kind of wanted to breeze through that fairly quickly because I wanted to talk to a couple of the guests that we have. So we've had some work done in the years past with the UA Canada and with Asahi America. So I'm going to bring them up here in just a minute and, and ask them questions that were no in way pre-planned or predetermined. Uh, so, um, so we'll start. With, yeah. So we'll start with the United Association. So a little history: uh, they were founded in '89, so 134 years old. Okay. Uh, they represent, their trade union representing a lot of different trades. So metal trades, welders, uh, in fact, uh, let's see, he's not in the room so I can talk about him, I won't say him by name, but their metal guy is here. Yeah, so <laughs> but, uh, so uh, steam fitters, quality control techs, and really the area that we are most engaged with is with the plumbers and the HVAC, uh, HVACR team, okay? So the UA in total has 370,000 members, that's USA and Canada, there's an affiliation with two other unions. Where is it? Ireland and Australia. Australia. Uh, so there, there's an affiliation there as well. And one thing to note is that they are heavily focused on training. 300 million spent on training annually. Okay, so it's a big deal. It's a big deal for them. And it's a great partner for us. Uh, McElroy has had a decades-long relationship with the UA. Uh, they have a training program that's in Ann Arbor every year that we've been going to for 20-plus years. Uh, so we've only been able to deepen that relationship over time. So specifically, let's talk about UA Canada and NOSC. So UA Canada is obviously the Canadian group, about 60,000 members in Canada across 20, no, 30 some odd locals. Yep. So 
Uh, they, uh, so NOSC stands for the National Association of Union Schools and Colleges. And that is basically it's a platform for national training programs. So UA in Canada works a little bit differently than in the US where they have this platform. They're able to roll out training on a national basis. Okay, so it makes it really easy for them to have consistency. And again, same training. If I get trained at Local 46 or somewhere across the country, it's the same training, same program, same credentials, same everything. Okay. So our formal, formal training partnership uh, was, was started with them in 2018. So it's been a little while, definitely growing. So I want to bring up Mike Gordon. Mike, switch places with you here so I can put my notes of my not predetermined questions. Uh, and, um, there goes your credibility. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the way you go. Uh, you know, most of these people know me, and they're like, yeah, there's no way. Uh, that's right. So, um, so Mike is the director of Canadian training, so everything basically funnels up through him on, on that. So first thing I've got in here is, tell me a little bit more about the emphasis that UA Canada and NOS places just on training in general. So uh, I have the privilege of working with about at upwards of 33 locations across Canada, over a million square feet of training space spread across the country. They're all leading a team. And then myself, Jay the person over here, one of our national training specialists, Ray Lemieux, I've not mentioned him by name, is in the room. <laughs> Metal guy. <laughs> spread out to bring There's information, it's a reciprocal thing here, right? Um, there's an ex one expectation from our members that we prepare them for success. So that means their expectation is of us, where do we bring value, is that we scout what is the best. And that is our recipe for you know, preparation meeting opportunities. So that you know, when our signatory contractors look to hire our members, we take that as an extension of our responsibility, that no matter what's presented to them, they can perform. So this is where training is that preparation. So, so my relationship and, and our relationship with, with Mike in particular started with a phone call probably around 2017, and then we formalized everything in 2018. And, and the way the, the phone call was roughly, hey, I'm Mike Gordon from UA Canada, and we're looking at developing a training program, and we want something involved with polyethylene and polypropylene in particular. So what were you seeing back in 2017, 2018 that said, you know what, plastics needs to be part of the path forward? So just as in the U.S., different provinces and territories across the country, they are some more innovative than others. So some are first at the gate to engage in these new opportunities. And our role is also to make sure that there's standard access to training, no matter where you are. That's what we promise to every member. You have access to this training. So in Canada, outside of the UA, and we're an endorsing factor for this, is the Red Seal program. It's the Interprovincial Mobility Program. So a person that is qualified in any of the trades that we represent that's also recognized as a Red Seal trade in Canada can travel. Mobility is a big problem for us. Yes, we have a very large country, but there's a select few that have the qualifications to get the jobs done. So we have to be able to provide this mobility. The Red Seal program is a collaboration between all provinces and territories to identify the scope of every <coughs> trade as agreed upon by every province and territory. It's a big responsibility. Well, it's a lot to train because we have massive scopes, every one of our trades. And fusion is part of the plumbing scope, part of the steam fitter pipe fitter scope, part of the welder scope, part of the refrigeration mechanic scope. It spread broadly. And, and actually for the fuels, for the natural gas and propane trades. So when we're looking at this, we needed to say, we need a little bit more emphasis because one of the things that we found is the lack of standardization. Though our trades are heavily standardized, the adoption of standardized, familiar terms and processes, to your point, are not standardized. Access to equipment to do this training, not standardized. Access to the piping, and special shout out to Aquatherm for engaging being part of this new relationship as an extension of McElroy, that we now have access to this pipe that every member in Canada, we believe in something, you know, supervision and a job site. One of the things that we look to do is remove the excuses. There's no excuse for any of our members to not be prepared for the opportunity to come to them. And we identified fusion as one of the key elements that we had to address. Perfect. So, so one of the things, too, that is noteworthy about with the UA 
is uh, we effectively developed a custom training program for them. So it was based on the foundation of what we were already doing, but we have that flexibility to meet their needs. So, you know, much like we really need, so we're able to put it together a program that works just for them. And it's a blended learning program. So it starts with the online and then they finish up with the hands-on at the local. So it gives them a lot of flexibility to present however they want. So the online stuff's great. We always get good feedback. But one of the things that I like about UA members in, to always be mindful of is these are the people that are actually executing the jobs, right? They, you know, the material's been specced in, the job's out there, they're good to go. Now they're, it's their responsibility to make the installation. So how important is that hands-on aspect of, of just focusing on tools? Because we're not talking a whole lot about pipe because that's often, it's there. That's not the emphasis, it's that hands-on training, that skill set. So how does that fit into what you guys are trying to do? Well, let me just start by saying every member has skin in the game. But what I mean by that is when they have the, the broad scope of their trade, including fusion, the expectation of their, their name, their integrity is everything to them. So when we're looking at what to do, we looked at the investment and in, in you're putting together the modules for us. We invested what, about upwards of $3 million on the mm -hmm. uh, getting equipment. So we've got equipment distributed to every loca location across Canada. So to that extent, what could impact their reputation? And the UA's record, uh, um, reputation as an extension of that, failure on the film. That is everything. So that means you may not get the next job. You may be discarded from the job that you're on. So having that standardized process, that standardization was key to us in, in, in partnering with McRoy allowed us to get there. Yeah, and it's, it has worked really well and it's been great. And it gets back to that, that portability, that consistency is again, wherever they're getting trained in the country, it's the same program. Um, so tell me a little bit, I, I referenced earlier about the apprenticeship program and the training that we do in Ann Arbor, the event that we, so polypropylene is fairly new to that event. It's been there for a few years, but this year it, we did a training class specifically on polypropylene. So, so how, t talk a little bit about what that competition is all about and how, how that benefits the UA and then the market in general. So we're always into recruitment and engagement, bringing in and, and forecasting the needs of labor in our industry, including the people we all represent. And part of that is apprenticeship. It's inherently part of what we do and uh, delivering that training. The apprenticeship competitions, as the UA calls it, or world bound competitions, the skills competitions. So that could be at the state level, provincial level, it goes on to by the, the country and then goes on to the world competitions. But we're engaged in everything. And why? Because we believe in our future. We need to make sure that there's a message that we value our future, that we're invested. We invest about between you, what, three million, just in Canada alone, probably around three million a year in these different promotional activities uh, and engagement things. So what does it also give us an ability to do? To scale not only our UA members that are participating in the competitions, but members that aren't UA and identify them. It, it creates this culture that's inherently part of the UA, which is training is everything to us. And, um, sorry, repeat that last part of the question there, last question. No, just just how that how adding polypropylene yeah. you know has added that to that part that piece of the competition. So we look at apprenticeship. That's the entry level, so bottom up, and we also look at top down. So we're marketing to our signatory contractors, to job site supervision, to adopt this. But we also want you know the, the reputation of apprentices that are fresh out of school or compete in these competitions that come out to job site is that look that's just part of the promotion of labor training that's happening, and we want that ripple effect coming up from the bottom up, and they're going to be the future workforce. We want them not to be afraid of this. We want them to embrace it. We know it's the future. <coughs> you know, Jeff put on a fantastic presentation in here yesterday, asking for a copy of that, by the way. And it's it's a method of selling that. That's, we are, although it's training, we're also traveling to mm -hmm. people. And that goes back to what I was talking about before about oftentimes these people walk away as advocates. So whether it was part of an apprenticeship program or, or something else, and it's been fun to go to Ann Arbor. A, a quick, this is not on my list, but quick diversion. We, as we started to go out to Ann Arbor with polypropylene tools, True story, first year we go out, we'd ask people, hey, are you familiar with polypropylene? Most people go, nah, no, yeah, you know, next year. I've heard of it, kind of seen it, and I kid you not, after a, th a third year, I had a guy come up, first day, I mean, first hour, comes up and says, oh man, you gotta see this. Takes out his phone, starts showing me this whole boiler room system that had all been done in polypropylene. So just in three years, he was super excited about it, it was fun. So one of the nice things about our partnership um, is that th there's that consistency and it's all macro tooling. Now, as much as we don't want to admit it, there's other tools out there, particularly in polypropylene. So my question to you, knowing the answer in advance, is um, 
was partnering with McElroy and having that, that just that, you know, that's the only tooling in the, in the training center. Is it, does that limit you at all? Are you seeing any issues there? There's a few layers because you're now beginning to hear from me for the first time. Um, yes, the transparency is a big factor for us too. So partnering with third parties, instead of us vouching to say our folks can do this, we have a third party that's endorsing and saying, yes, absolutely they can do it. And they can do it with that. That's, that's a big deal for us. When we scouted, we didn't just randomly pick up the, or I didn't randomly pick up the call, uh, pick up the phone and call you. It was a matter of I scouted around, the team scouted around, and we were able to identify who the top manufacturer, who's engaged proactively with the industry, who is the best partner to start out in this road. And it was undoubtedly macro. That's, you know, it's been great ever since. And then you've been a pathway to other relationships because that's what this is mm -hmm. all about, right? Yeah, and it's and it's been a it's it's just been such a hugely successful program. Uh, it, it's one that we talk about a lot at McElroy, just because it, it was one of our first ventures in this way. It was unique. It was customized. It was a lot of fun. Um, so those are the bulk of my questions. Anything you want to share before you uh, get to have a seat and we bring Mr. Joe up? I'm, I'm open for any questions. If anybody in the room, we're, we have a great partnership with Aquatherm, and we're very thankful for that partnership <clears throat> along with McElroy. We're also looking for various vendors for polyethylene that can distribute in Canada that's willing to work with us in regards to access to that piping for our members. And the, there's a big win-win here in that our members tend to vouch for the products that they're most familiar with if they have success. So Aquatherm proactively sees that, they embrace it, and we want to get a polyethylene <coughs> manufacturer on board as well so we can continue to build our relationship with them. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Thank yeah, thanks. Yeah, so great partnership. And again, all about the partnerships and all the different pieces pulled together. So, okay, so let's talk about next on our list here, if I can advance the slide. Yeah, I probably hit a button. There we go. So, Asahi America. So, Asahi you're probably familiar with, you may have heard of, small little company. Uh, but, uh, oops, I got too far ahead. So, uh, leading manufacturer, distrib distributor of fluid flow solutions, valves, actuators, piping systems. Big focus on industrial, chemical, wastewater treatment, high purity markets. Uh, over a thousand distributors in North America and Latin America, and they also have in-house pipe fabrication shops in Massachusetts and Louisiana. So big organization. Again, somebody we've had a relationship in one way or another, been around, at least see each other at shows, go to dinner. Um, uh, Joe and Jeff and I serve on PPI committees together and whatnot. So we've been in and around our, uh, each other for a while. But this is an organization that is already really focused on training. Uh, they've got 25 trainers and five master trainers. So they've got people out there doing this. Uh, in 2022, they issued over 1,000 certifications. And so far in 2023, they're at 1,200. So training is definitely growing. Uh, so you may bring the question up and say, like, well, then what do they need McElroy for? And that's why Joe Penitowski is here, because he's going to tell us. So. <laughs> So, so Joe, you know, I, I mentioned that we've always had this good relationship uh, with, with our companies uh, anyhow, but this particular relationship really started with a conversation about training. Tools and stuff followed very quickly. It was all, it's part of the equation, right? But it was all about training. You already own a lot of training. So what changed in your world where it made sense to say, you know what, we need to get McElroy involved and bring them on board? All right, so we've been selling and welding pipe. Before they had Macquarie University, by the way, um, where we bring in all the distributors and stuff and train them on how to teach on how to well. So we did that. Um, anybody know how many butt method welds we do at a time? Guesses? Anybody know more than one? All right, we've got standard contact butt fusion, we have infrared non contact butt fusion, and we also have a beadless butt fusion where a balloon goes in to keep the bead from building up on the inside of the pipe. So right there, we have three types of butt, socket, side saddle, electric fusion, double contained piping. So by the time we put all these training programs together, I think our PowerPoint presentation was like 800 slides. 
which was like 120 freaking gigabytes. <laughs> you can't email it to anybody. So we tried to narrow that down into little sections, and it just, we said, this is crazy. So we wanted to reach out to McElroy. We want the content and the deliverables to be the same, no matter who's doing the training or who's viewing the training. Every one of our 25 sales guys might skip a step or say the same thing. Depends who he was trained by and stuff like that. So we wanted the content deliverables to be the same to everybody, every time. So again, a lot of that was, so part of our relationship with them is, is, is we're developing that training. Uh, so we've got, again, that's why I brought up the, you know, the Macro University team. We've got the resources to put that together, to aim that, to make all those deliverables so that they can focus on what they do best, which is pushing out pipe and supporting the pipe, right? And, and then ultimately delivering the training, because uh, those are two aspects. One thing to develop the content, something else to deliver it. It's easy, when you have good content, deliverability makes it a lot easier. So, so one thing that, that, I, that I will bring up, and I, I can say this since it was in the press release a few weeks back, but uh, so uh, prior to this, you guys had a lot of equipment that was not green. Uh, but you have, um, uh, you have transitioned over, in the process of transitioning over, wherever possible, everything to McElroy. So tell me a little bit about that decision, how that fit in and whatnot. Yeah, obviously COVID had a big part of it. Uh, delayed shipments from overseas. I won't say which country, which company. Um, <laughs> uh, miscommunication, everything else with COVID. Um, so we started really looking at it, saying we really need somebody based in the U.S. So obviously the green team came up. That was our number one reason. And then also was the data logger. Being able to use a data logger on 99% of their tools, which we really want to push for training, validation, QA, QC, any of that. So data logger was definitely a big part. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's been it's been fun as well just to um, uh, to work with you guys on the tooling because gives us an opportunity to get in front of people again and bring them up to speed and a lot of interaction. We've been having um, groups of uh, starting with the Asahi group coming through. Nice thing is Shannon and Jeff and I have had a lot of dinners at steakhouses, so that's been really really good. Um, almost to the point where like really we're going there again, you know. So, but anyhow, it's all good. So, um, so. To go along with that, though, is because they have so much equipment, I mentioned early about the maintenance training, so that's part of what we're doing. So tell us a little bit about how we're engaging in that and how important that part of it as well for that your internal team to know how to operate, but also as we get into how they maintain it and whatnot and why that's a big yeah, deal. Yeah, 90% of our business is renting tools out. Um, so I wish people treated the rental tools like they rent a car because they know if they return it and it's damaged, they're going to get charged, but they don't care. Tools come back covered in mud, scratch, broken clamps, whatever. It just, you guys know, whoever rents tools, you know. So, you know, part of the inspection program is how do we keep track of these tools out in the field? What maintenance has been done? What common repairs have been done? So we plan on using the inspection tool to be able to track all this stuff. We do it now in Excel or different reports or all this stuff, but to have it in one location on the wall where we can look up each one of our tools and say, okay, this one is broken down four times or it's six years old. You know what? It's either dump it or sell it. Which one? And that's where, again, that's why I mentioned the one bullet on, on the maintenance training we have. So, again, it's that powerful partnerships and making sure that they're covered and that they have all the needs that they have in addition to the stuff that is the real obvious things. Okay. So, um, so, so I'll ask you the same kind of semi-loaded question that I asked Mike is, you know, there are other manufacturers out there, particularly in polypropylene, that we see that have some, you know, some level of, of <coughs> penetration. Um, you know, you guys have gone all in with McElroy, and again, it's rental market mostly, but does that, do you feel like that's going to limit you at all? And somebody says, hey, I want another machine or, or any challenges there? No, I mean, obviously not. Um, McElroy developed that Polygon LT in eight months because of a need for us. We weld a lot of Halar, which is ECTF piece. Three second close time. That tool was designed to hit that three second close time in half three tools. It's amazing. And we used to have a special heater mirror for it. You know, it just, they developed that tool to help us out for that need. We have other needs, shop tools, fitting fabrication, stuff like that, which is on Shannon's list and Jeff's list. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mainly, you know, the field tools you guys offer now, like the quick fix. We got customers saying, they're great tools. How about IPS insert? So that's on the list. You know, we're gonna keep going. So yeah. yeah. And you bring up a good point too, because just like just like so many of you, if you've been around Macroy a long time, uh, all, the nice thing about our channel partners is nobody is shy about telling us what we're not doing right or what else they need. Okay. Um, 
which is good. We want to hear that. But that being said, it's the same for training, okay? So I won't go into details, but Mike called me, uh, or uh, uh, Joe called me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, um, when we're done with this other thing, here's three more that we need. And it wasn't even on our list before. We kind of had talked about it once before, but it was like, here's the priority. So even on the training aspect, if there's training modules that you need or courses that you need or whatever, again, we've got the resources and the tools to partner up with you to do that. So I mentioned those other fuck mail with you, infrared, non-contact, e-loop. That's right, all that's not the next one. But they're helping us develop the constant training program with our information. We shit with cool down here, they take pictures, make videos. So they'll help us out with somebody else's cool. So it's gonna help us. And ultimately it helps the market as a whole, because people are putting the right kind of products out and you know, so a lot of it there's a bigger you know, we can talk polyethylene, we can talk polypropylene, but oftentimes, depending on which conference we're at, we're really talking plastics. So as it broads out a little bit, there's advantages to all of that. So, yeah. Um, we don't always, we, we don't only just well PP and PE. We have PDF, PCTFB. So even though their training program says PP butt welding, it still works for PDF, PCTF. It's just the weld turner is different. So we have to at least mention that in there. This class is based on PP, but it still covers all the other two. Awesome. Well, well, well. Anything I miss? Any other great things that you want to say about us that'll make us all go? Awesome. Okay. 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 I'm very enthusiastic about this whole thing. All right. <laughs> thanks, Joe. That's that's all. That's all I've got. And um, um, yeah. So thanks for that. I appreciate that. So so next steps. Um, obviously, we're passionate about training. It's it's a piece of McElroy that oftentimes people don't fully understand how passionate we are about the training. It's just something that they know, or maybe they saw the logo or whatever. So that's part of the reason for this session. We're passionate about these partnerships, and we want to have the right partners. We want to partner up with you, and really in, in whatever capacity. If you're a pipe manufacturer, then we want to talk to you about a cohesive pro training program that includes both equipment and pipe. So if you've got training, we combine those together. We go to market together. Here's something that covers it all. If you're a distributor, same thing, let us work with you on the training. Let you worry about getting things out in the field, getting going, we can help back up that training program so you're not having to spend time creating that. Hey, new standard came out, who's gonna update all the PowerPoint slides? We've got you covered on that one. Um, and the bottom line is really, together we're better. Okay, this is a big deal. Uh, McElroy uh, cherishes our partnerships. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a story about when I first started at McElroy. I was talking to one of the guys who'd been here a few, few years, and I didn't really know the industry that well. I was, I was kind of new to it all, and I said, I said, so tell me, um, I said, tell me, I said, what do you think the biggest thing is that sets McElroy apart? And at the time, there were other competitors that have since gone by the wayside. And without hesitation, he says, our distribution network. Okay, so at that time, that was the conversation. It was these partnerships that we have that let us get out in the market, get that feedback out. So what we've been trying to do with Macro University same idea, right? It's just now it's a knowledge product instead of a physical product, but it all supports, it all helps. So when you're ready for the next step, it's real easy. Contact me, contact Jeff Turner. Really, if you pick up the phone and call McElroy and say, I need to talk to the training guy, it's probably gonna get to me anyhow, okay? Uh, unless they're, you know, depending on who answers, they may send you out in the shop, and then if you wanna learn how to operate a CNC machine, they'll get you taken care of, but. So yeah, so give us a call, let's talk more. Uh, for sure, work together to put whatever the training is that you need, however we can help you and support you and go out together and go from there. So, um, Jeff, I'm gonna call you, you wanna add anything? This is your, your, you're the polypropylene guy. Did I miss anything? I, I, no, I think uh, all three of you guys really uh, added all the, the color commentary that you needed here. It's, um, if you guys have any questions or any thoughts, how you can get involved or how you can get your partnerships involved in any of the training, we'd we love to talk to you guys. And uh, the, the program and, and everything that Paul and his team have built is very easy for us to include with the partnerships that we have. So there's consistency across the board. So uh, how they roll this out shown a lot of success and we can, we can help make training much easier and better across the board for folks, especially from a uh, qualified operator standpoint. So we're excited about it. Yeah, awesome, thanks. And, I, and, and I'll just end with, oftentimes when somebody comes to me with questions about training, uh, my first question is, what do you need? Okay, so we, we start there and then we'll say, what do you need? Okay, here's what we've got. Where does that fit the need? Where do we need to tweak it? Sometimes we can get it done the right, that, you know, pretty quick, sometimes we're not. Um, so by all means, don't, just because you saw something that's, well, I didn't see a class up there for this. That's, that's not the conversation. What do you need? Let's talk about getting you there, okay? So 
That's all I got. Any questions? Comments? I'm here all week. So. Right. Can you completely do that all online, or does, is it, do you always require that someone comes in at the end and like he verifies that they can use the equipment? Yeah. So for any kind of operator qualification, there is always an in-person hands-on component. Okay. So the only exception is on the polyethylene side, we have an inspector course. Uh, that you can complete online. Uh, we're developing one for polypropylene with the idea there that they're not actually operating. They, they need to understand concepts, <laughs> procedures, stuff like that, right? But in order to become a qualified operator, you have to get in front of somebody and, and actually fuse pipe and go from there. And that's, that's how you get check checkbox, yeah. My plan, Scott, is um, have people go through the online course yes. and then either have one of our sales guys who is certified to inspect the wells or if the customer hooks up a data logger, mm -hmm. takes pictures of the wells, I can validated from my office. And I'm okay with that. If they've gone through the training, I can look at the wells, see the graph. I'm okay with that. We can either have an in-person inspection, what actually physically watch the dual well, or I can do it remotely. Yeah, and, and again, that goes, some of that goes back to custom. In fact, I'll, uh, I saw Ryan, we did, we did a test, a trial back, in a few years, was, I think you were involved, and that was, uh, we were trying with the hollow lens in Guam, actually. So we were experimenting then during COVID, hey, can we do that and whatnot, you know, so. All that stuff's on the table, but normally the process is online concepts, hands-on, you go from there. So, questions? Clint. So, in the polyethylene world, there's a standard, it's ASTM F 3190 that dictates what that looks like. We follow the same for polypropylene because there's not anything overriding. Basically, what a requalification looks like is a qualification is good for two years. And then after two years, within three months of their time frame, they have to show that they've been fusing pipe, uh, that they've been doing it for a while. They take some online material, just kind of refresh concepts, maybe there's something updated, and they get back in front of an instructor to take the written test, the hands-on test, if they pass the both, then they're qualified again for another two years. You know, so, and they go on from there, so. But, uh, yeah, yeah, by written, yeah, written, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's an online test, unless they have no connectivity, and then it's, but that's what we call the written test. It's a true and false, multiple choice, like that, yeah. Uh, some. <laughs> so, so, we have a few things in Spanish, not nearly as much as I would like to. Um, it is on our agenda to do that. Uh, what I'll tell you on that is we have, we have changed the way that we create the content. Uh, it used to be a lot of talking heads and person that was a little harder. So we've changed the structure so that we can easily backfill with, uh, with Spanish language voiceovers and whatnot. So, and again, anytime we've created something custom, if that's where we need to start, we'll start there and go from there. We've got some Spanish speakers in, in country, so we can, we can do that, so. Yep, yeah, so yeah, so, so ideally, in an ideal world, we'd have everything that we do in both Spanish and English, and we've had other requests for other languages. Uh, quite honestly, that's as much just a time factor as anything else, so. Not, not within my direct reports, uh, but, um, but Francisco, we never let him get very far away. And uh, uh, we've got a few that um, uh, are, are nearby. We've got Juan and, and Rafa and whatnot. So we, so we pull from our own internal resources. I don't currently have a Spanish speaker on the direct team. You know, so. But again, these guys are out doing trainings themselves, so they're part of that extended. In fact, you know, Francisco's one, we'll have requests every once in a while. Uh, people call in Tulsa. Hey, we're doing a class. Um, I have two people that only speak Spanish, can, so I'll call Francisco, hey, can you be here? And we're, you know, he's teaching them in Spanish while we're teaching in English, and then they all go together, so we accommodate however we can. So eventually we'll have, hopefully, everything in multiple languages. So I can tell you that our learning management system is set up that um, if somebody is, logs in and puts Spanish, then the whole system is in Spanish, and then we just get, a, get the content out there. So questions? And one more. So. All right, that's all I've got for you. I'll be around you know, tonight, 
I'm, I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm here all week. Uh, I won't be, here, won't be here next week, but feel free to shoot me an email. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, otherwise, yeah, reach out to us and, and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. So, awesome. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your help.